Yes, God bless each and every one of you and greetings in the mighty and wonderful and matchless and magnificent and extraordinary and uplifting name of our Lord and Savior and advocate and bridge over troubled water. I'm talking about Jesus Christ, our Savior. God bless each and every one of you. And thank you so much for tuning in on this Tuesday night. We appreciate you so much. And we are in our post Pentecost celebration time. And thank God for such a powerful outpouring of the Holy Ghost on Pentecost Sunday, especially for us in Missouri Midwest, as we journey to the city of Kansas City, Missouri, and we're there at the historic Christian Tabernacle Church of God in Christ. Bishop Hall ministering to us and the Holy Ghost being poured out. I tell you, we are just excited about this season that God is ushering in us into. And why are you excited, Hankerson? I'm excited because by the year 2033, it will be the 2000th anniversary of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost and the 2000th birthday of the church. That's right, in the next 12 years, June the 5th, and that's gonna be a Sunday, nine o'clock in the morning, Jerusalem time will be 2000 years. Well, Hankerson, you don't even know whether you'll be living then. No, I don't know, and we don't know what the future may hold, but should Jesus tarry, and like the old folks used to say, if the creek don't rise and the Lord delay his coming, we are gonna see that. And I believe that leading up to that, even starting now, there's a season of miracles and blessings that God is taking his people into. And listen, I want you to hit that uh, hit that button, that arrow. I don't wanna say the particular button because of course there's that most unholy algorithm that we're still dealing with on social media. So I almost said it, I almost, said it. David said, my feet almost slipped and my tongue almost slipped and I almost said what I want you to do. But here's what you can do. Instead of me saying it, look at the bottom of your screen and follow those four instructions right there. And they will tell you exactly what to do. But I want you to share because we have someone. I went on and said it anyways. But anyways, I, I want you to uh, do what it's saying at the bottom of the screen, because we have an awesome man of God that is going to be sharing his miracle testimony today, as well as the um, great things that God has done in his life. You know, for years coming up as a young child in this grand old church of God in Christ. There are so many icons that I would look up to. And this is definitely one of them. Bishop William Cahoon, never dreaming, never dreaming that I would be able to interact with him, be on prayer services with him. I'm telling you, the old, old saints used to tell me, son, you just live holy, you stay humble, you keep on praying, and God is going to bless you. And I'm telling you, that may not seem like a whole lot to you, but I'm telling you, as a young child looking up and seeing these icons and never dreaming that you would be able to interact uh, with these uh, great men of God, I'm coming to tell you, it is a blessing. And we're in a tremendous season right now. I know there's a General Assembly conference that is going on. The annual Women's Convention is this week. And I want you to stay tuned uh, to the International Women's Convention because my supervisor of the Department of Women in Missouri Midwest Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction is one of the speakers. I'm talking about Supervisor T. Marie Brown. And she is a powerful vessel of the Lord that God is going to use in a great way. And of course, our hearts still grieve on the homegoing of uh, the late great supervisor, Joyce Rogers, great friend of mine, great friend of this ministry. But I thank God that her legacy and ministry and anointing and messages are going to live on for generations to come should Jesus tarry. Please don't forget that we are yet in the midst of the 10 weeks of prayer led by our presiding bishop, Bishop J. Drew Shear. You can see the information on the screen. Of course, it is too small for you to read. So go to kojic.org and you can get a larger version of the flyer or make sure you look at the Church of God in Christ Facebook page. Now, let me take my glasses off so I can see. Hankerson, that doesn't make any sense, but I tell you, seriously, you may not understand it, but sometimes I have to take my glasses off to see. Bishop William Cahoon is the prelate of the New Garden State Jurisdiction of the Church of God in Christ. He oversees churches in various counties there in the state of New Jersey. He is educated. He has a degree in pastoral excellence. He definitely has a degree in theology, and I'm excited about that because uh, you don't find that too often that um, individuals matriculate and have those types of degrees. So we are dealing with a learned man as the, uh, I keep talking about the old folks, but as the saints would say, we're dealing with the learned individual. Not only that, but what really impresses um, me is the 
uh, senior bishop of his area. And not only is he the senior bishop, but for 28 years, he served on the National Board of Trustees. Now here I am thanking God for going into my third term as president of evangelism. But can you imagine 28 years dealing with us, <laughs> dealing with the saints? And he has done that. And that is tremendous. And for 12 years, he served as the secretary of the board. There's various capacities that he served in, in the Church of God in Christ. He is the pastor of the House of Prayer Church of God in Christ in Plainfield, New Jersey, and also the historic New Reed Temple Church of God in Christ in East Orange, New Jersey. We're getting ready to hear a tremendous man of God that God literally brought back from death and worked a miracle. And we just want to hear what God would say to him. We're going to ask him questions, but really, we just want the man of God to talk and share with us. And so without any further ado, all the way from the state of New Jersey, let's receive one of the fathers of the Church of God in Christ, Bishop William Cahoon. There he is. God bless you, Bishop. Uh, God bless you, Bishop Hankerson. The Lord bless you. Thank you so very much. It's so good to see you, sir, and I appreciate you, and I've um, enjoyed serving in some of your various prayer services that you've had, and you have been so supportive of uh, up-and-coming leaders in the Church of God in Christ. And we just appreciate you being a father. So what we want you to do, Bishop, give us your story. Tell us about your salvation experience, being baptized in the Holy Ghost. You've shared some tip, tidbits with me before, and it's just supernatural how those things occurred. But if someone asks the question, who is Bishop William, William Cahoon? Share that with us today. God bless the Lord bless you. First, I want to thank you for inviting me to come and to share with you and with the people that uh, share in this uh, uh, on this evening. May the Lord bless you. Um, Bishop William T. Cahoon, William T. Cahoon, William Theophilus Cahoon. Somebody might say what the T stands for. <laughs> Theophilus. Uh, it is Greek, uh, Theophilus, Greek, and uh, it means uh, beloved uh, of God, friend of God, uh, loved by God. And uh, I am really thankful for that. And just let me give you a little historicity. Can I give you a little history? A little yes, history? sir. Go ahead, Bishop. <laughs> uh, I was one of the first uh, uh, of my siblings to be delivered by the doctor. Wow. And, um, my mother had already had four boys and she was expecting a girl this time. So uh, I uh, <laughs> surprised everybody. So she said, oh, my Lord, my oldest sister tells me about this. Matter of fact, I was down in Georgia last week, uh, celebrating Mother's Day with my uh, oldest sister. She is the matriarch of our family now, wow. seven years old. And uh, so I was there and I was glad to be there with her. But uh, she often tells me uh, things like this. And she said that um, my mother said, what am I going to name him? And she said that the doctor said, doggone it, doggone it, named the boy after me on my birth certificate. <laughs> that delivered me was William Theophilus Chapman and I am William Theophilus Cahoon. Wow. <laughs> With you. God bless you. Uh, I left uh, New Jersey. I mean, I left uh, Georgia. I am from Georgia. I'm from Brunswick, Georgia. And I left uh, Georgia uh, right after uh, I graduated high school there uh, many years ago, many years ago, and uh, uh, headed uh, north to New Jersey uh, to work and to go to school. And uh, did not know anybody, not one soul uh, in the state of New Jersey. I only had an address where my brothers lived uh, when they were working on the seashore. Uh, wow. And I went there at the rooming house and asked for a room. She did not have any more rooms left, but she took me, sent me to a place, uh, a nice private home. And there I uh, was able to uh, live with that family. They took me in, literally took me in without knowing me. Uh, it was the Lord's doing. It's the Lord. So uh, from there, you know, the Lord just allowed, thing, allowed things to happen and to fall in place. Uh, I don't. You want me to go say, tell you a little more about that? Yes, sir. Tell us about the supernatural events that occurred. Yes, with happened, that. <laughs> happened was God bless you. Uh, the house that I uh, she sent to me to did not know anyone. As I stated, uh, she uh, had one room left. And, uh, I only had six dollars in my pocket uh, all the way from Georgia to New Jersey. And she said she wanted $6 a week, but she did not want a week in advance. She said, don't worry about that. Just bring your things in on upstairs and make yourself at home. And it 
exactly what he said, make your, it was a home away from home. That was God placing me that he was a member of the church of God in Christ. I did not know that. Now, she said to me, said, there's a gentleman across the hall from Georgia. He and his wife say they're working here on the seashore. She said, you might know it to myself. Georgia is a large place. <laughs> I might know him. So she said, knock on the door. I knocked on the door. And the gentleman came to the door. He said to me, what are you doing in New Jersey? It was the same gentleman that my brothers would come. They would come to New Jersey to work. The wow. gentleman that this was God. Yes. Out of all of the homes, out of God allowed me to go to that home. And he said, oh, man, I'm glad to see you. He said, my boss said, bring somebody with me to work tomorrow. So it's Friday evening, about four o'clock in the morning. I'm riding down the road uh, on my way to this uh, restaurant. Uh, and there they hired me. And from the time I've been, I've been in the state of New Jersey, I've been working. So thanks to God for that, for the miraculous hand yeah. that watched over me and, and, and really placed me in the right home with the right people. Yeah. That is amazing. And that's why I wanted you to bring that out, Bishop, because God's hand has been on your life um, from a child up until yes. now. Yes. It has just been tremendous how God has uh, been using you. Now, explain to me your salvation experience. There's a uh, movement I believe that you came up in. It's, it's a holiness church, but not the Church of God in Christ. And tell us about that and how you ended up coming into the Church of God in Christ. Absolutely. As a child, about 10 years old, the Lord touched me in this the Church of Christ written in heaven. Wow. Um, yeah, that church, that organization, a little church in the country uh, that uh, had some homemade benches that didn't even have a back to it. You just had to sit up straight the whole time you were there. Wow. It had me tarrying, and the Lord touched me at the age of 10. Jesus. I knew, I knew without a doubt that God had touched me, and uh, tears run over, oh, the joy that I felt in, a, in my soul, in my spirit. Oh, what a night. Left home, walked home with a friend, and uh, got in the house about 9.30, and... Um, my mother and my sister was up and they said, what happened to you? You look different. And they started smiling and laughing. And I said, I got saved tonight. Hey. <laughs> said, and my mother and my sister, they embraced me and they wow. were so nice. And let me tell you this, when I left home, nobody did not know that I was leaving, but my oldest sister. And I thought that uh, not one soul was, uh, you know, present to see me, she told me, she uh, shared with me when I was there in Georgia and explained, say, I saw you when you were putting your big suitcase out of the window in the room when you were leaving. She said, I never mentioned it to mama, to not a soul. And I'm just telling you that I saw you when you left. Wow, Jesus. Brought me thus, uh, Bishop, nobody but God, nobody. Wow. Yes. That is, that is amazing, Bishop. So you left Definitely. Georgia at a young age. High school, went through high wow. school. And I, you know, as a way, as you know, a lot of times you drift away from the Lord in, yeah. in high school uh, and what have you. And uh, went through high school, uh, many things that I could share with you that God was with me that got myself into, but the Lord brought me out of it, got me out of it. Yeah. And able to graduate from high school headed north and here I am uh, oh, and when I got here uh, uh, the people that uh, lady that was living in the apartment in the room next door in Asbury Park she uh, came to Newark where I wow. at after a year or so there and uh, they were the ones that uh, I met other young people that were saved and they knew that I was not saved as I should, you know, and they started praying for me and God saved me. I met some other young people uh, at uh, the Wells Cathedral. I went to an event there and met those young people that started praying for me and God saved me in the year of 1962, sanctified me, turned my life completely around, filled me with the Holy Ghost, left the church speaking in tongues, mm. me to my uh, room where I was rooming, still speaking in tongues. I spoke in tongues, oh my God, for such a long time. 
And uh, this dear woman of God, uh, I was speaking in tongues and the spirit said, get those cigarettes out of your pocket and that knife and everything and throw it in the garbage. And I did. And uh, wow. desire for another cigarette since then. And I don't carry knives anymore. <laughs> guns. I don't deal with it. Bishop, you carry knives and guns? <laughs> and, and, and I don't smoke either. And I don't drink either anymore. The Lord sanctified my life. Thanks be unto God. The Lord has brought me and he has been with me all of these years. And uh, got into school, was able to meet these young people. They were able to get me to matriculate into school and attended school in New York City, Manhattan Bible Institute, and ran on through uh, courses and met my dear wife at the age of 24. Wow. He that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. Mm -hmm. in the favor of the Lord. I had the favor of God. Mm -hmm. Most intelligent, save. Oh, I, I just cannot even express. I miss her every day. I lost yeah. her. You know, she's five years. Yes, sir. Almost married for 48 years. Wow. Four uh, children, never had a minute's trouble out of them. The only trouble I've had out of my son, he wanted to keep mine polo shirts when he started. <laughs> And I had to tell him, you can't do that. You got to save some money, son. You get ready to go to college. Wow. All of my children, I have four children, 11 grandchildren, and one great grand. Wow. Just He was just born three weeks ago. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think his, I think his name is, uh, I think his name is Maverick Troy. Wow. Maverick Troy Tisdale. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, God bless. Uh, the Lord has been with us and blessed us. Uh, teaching and and uh, I was at Wells Cathedral. Got saved at Wells Cathedral. Uh, Bishop Chandler David Owens, our late great presiding bishop, the Bishop C. D. Owens, wow. and he mentor. And uh, he uh, really, really, the Lord led me there to that place, and it was through him that I was uh, really uh, introduced and. Uh, it was utilized on the national level of our church uh, as a trustee. Board. And I got elected in 1984. Wow. Yeah, sure didn't serve until 2012. Absolutely. Yes. That's amazing, Bishop. And so um, oh. God just really exalted and escalated your journey and did great things. Tell us about some of those years. You got saved in 1962, which was really um, a year after the death of Bishop Mason. Right. And for many in this generation, we hear about, even though Bishop Mason died in 61, we hear about um, the great miracles that occurred back during those particular days. We know that there were some turbulent times in the 60s, but you know, God was still on the throne and God was still saving. Uh, so what are some of the things that you saw miraculously during the 60s and the 70s and those days? If you could share some of that for this current generation that may not know um, anything about that. And for those of you that are tuning in, this is Bishop William Cahoon, who served on our National Trustee Board for 28 years. He served as the secretary of the board. He is the prelate of the New Garden State Jurisdiction, and he is the senior bishop of that area. So Bishop, kind of speak to us about some of the great things that you've seen God do through these years. Instantaneously healing people, healing wow. people, taking people off of, uh, crutches. A lady uh, walked in the church. I was conducting a revival. Uh, wasn't even. I was. I, I'm not pastoring. Just, just preaching, man. And uh, the Lord, uh, the lady came in there on uh, crutches, and um, uh, the Lord uh, had me. To, they, they finally brought up to the altar, sat in the chair, and I prayed. The Lord uh, shared with me as to what to do. Lay my hands on her and pray for. Her. And told, I spoke to her and said, get up in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And the power of the Holy Ghost hit that woman and lifted her up out of that chair. And she left there that night dancing. She was dancing and praising and walking. And they carried those crutches and put them <laughs> and put her in the car. She was praising God. And for wow. you, 
she she really you know somewhat uh, just always thanked me and that I prayed for and whatever. But I've saw many miracles under the uh, Bishop Owens. God used Bishop Owens in mm. and for people and working miracles. Homes uh, brought put back together and uh, uh, young people saved. I mean, back in those days, the young people they they would pray for one another and have all night shut ins and pray for each other. And God would save those young people and mm. break yokes on their lives and uh, uh, put them in the church and then they would go on with the Lord. And uh, I miss that, I miss that. Uh, that's why I try to have these uh, shut-ins. I've had an all night prayer uh, since we've been on the prayer line, the prayer conference. Mm. We had about 165 people on that all night from 12 midnight to 6 a.m. Jesus. Uh, 12 people to pray to pray 30 minutes, uh, two persons per hour. And uh, they hung in there and we prayed and prayed and we've seen the results. Miracles have happened. Mm. There's only, uh, Mother Burwell wanted, they, they wanted to uh, do surgery on her, th on her th throat. But she said, no, she was gonna wait on Jesus. Wow. The saints prayed. She testified on our prayer conference. That's the only testimony I've had people to, to uh, share, but we're gonna move into different levels of, of that kind of a thing on that conference, that prayer conference line uh, that we have uh, 6 to 6.30 in the morning. So uh, she testified that God gave her a miracle. Mm -hmm. She went back to the doctor and the doctor looked down her throat and said, I don't see it anymore, it's gone. She said she started praising God right there in front of the doctor. And when she left out of his office, she went into the bathroom and had church by herself. Wow. God is yet working miracles. God is yet moving in, in a great way and is yet filling with the Holy Ghost also. Yes. That, that's awesome. It, now, it sounds to me, let me ask uh, a question this way. Um, many times when we hear about the late former presiding bishop Chandler David Owens, we hear about the man with the golden voice, right. uh, the man that knew how to manage and administrate right. finances. But you're sharing something that I'm sure this generation has never heard of, and that is the miracle ministry God would do through him. And it almost sounds like since you were under his ministry, that mantle fell on you. Um, talk to us about that. David Owens is the, pers is the man, the person that God used for the spirit of prayer. I've been praying. Uh, for decades, uh, early in the morning, uh, going to church, driving early in the morning to the church, not at my home, to the church. And in there, I started out with the uh, first time I had, it was five o'clock in the morning, I had about uh, over 40 people in it, five o'clock. Uh, and then from five, I went to, I, I would do five o'clock on Mondays and Fridays because I've uh, it, it dropped in me that that's a sacrifice right after Sunday to come to church that, that time. People have been healed, delivered, set free. Lives have been changed. Homes have been put back together. Children have come back home. I'm telling you the truth about this thing. I'm telling you the truth. Wow. I've been praying for many years, trying to get the saints to come. And they've come over the years, over the years, over the years. And then they dwindle off, dwindle off, dwindle off. And right now I have a young man uh, that goes to that church in the morning, Harrison. And he goes to that church early in the morning. He prays in that church. He prays in that church. And, uh, as a result, God, after this uh, healing that the Lord gave to me, and I've had challenges, uh, these physical challenges, uh, life challenges. 16, I lost my my dear wife. 17, my they pulled my little grandson out of the pool, uh, lifeless. And uh, God told me to pray. And uh, the devil did not know that there were more Christians around that pool than any other. And we prayed and God gave that miracle without any after effects. He walked out of the hospital from that Friday evening and that Wednesday morning, my two uh, daughters, they put that, we were in Georgia, in Jacksonville, Florida. They had to uh, call for an airplane to fly him into Jacksonville, Florida, uh, after they brought him off of the island where we were vacationing. Mm -hmm. And uh, God raised that, there was a miracle. The doctors were amazed. They were taken back. They could not believe it. 
The Lord gave me to walk the whole day that Saturday, all day that Saturday, I walked around that hospital. I walked, found a special place, and I prayed, walking, prayed, and fast praying. And God raised up that boy. And and let me just say this to you, uh, 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 Bishop. Yes, sir. I was scheduled to uh, preach for the late uh, great G. Bobby Hall in uh, Brunswick, Georgia, that Sunday morning. I was up uh, late because I left the hospital late that Saturday night. I came in. I was praying and I was studying. And about three o'clock in the morning, my uh, I got a text, bing, and it was my daughter. She said, Daddy, he just woke up. He woke up and he looked, and I took him by him by the hand because they had him. Oh, he was in, he was not, he was not supposed to wake up. Jeez. They had him sedated. Mm. God woke that boy up to let us know everything is going to be all right. Wow. She said, can hear me, Justin, squeeze my hand. And he would squeeze her hand. Mm. Every, and then he went back out. And he didn't wake up not until that Monday. And then Tuesday, they put regular street clothes on him. And Wednesday, he walked out of the hospital. God gave him a miracle. He was pulled him out of the pool. And it was a garbage can over there. I went and leaned on that garbage can and prayed until the ambulance took him away. Then I got in my car and followed the ambulance to the hospital. Praying God. Prayer works. Yeah, yeah. Prayer. That's the mission, vision, and the goal of our prayer ministry. That people in time with God. Yes. Definitely. So, I mean, that is just... Um, amazing and just almost uh, shocking to hear the challenges that you faced. And really, as you talked and as you've been ministering and for everyone again that's tuning in uh, just now, this is Bishop William Cahoon, and he is one of the fathers of the Church of God in Christ. And he's sharing us about God's miracle working power and the great things that God will do. Uh, but I like what you stated. You stated that God worked a miracle for you. And I want you to talk about that because you faced a recent um, Yes. Hell set back and God brought you through. But I like what you said, because there's a lot of people that will say, well, if God has all this power, why didn't everybody get healed? Why don't we just, you know, um, wave our hand and then everything just uh, goes away. But I like what you said. You said God did a miracle for you, but there's been some setbacks. There's been some challenges. And so people need to realize that there are going to be challenges that we face in life. My heart grieves with you as I hear you talk about uh, your wife that has gone on to be with the Lord. You can hear that, you know, you all really loved each other and um, um, that you have a blessing to your ministry. But but talk to us about that, because some people think that just because God works miracles, there's not going to be any problems. Can you help to encourage some people? Well, sure. I, I mean, I can go back to uh, 16. I lost her. 17 with the uh, accident with my grandson. 18. I was in Louis, Kentucky. Uh, and when I checked in the hotel there, uh, I was shaking like a leaf on a tree and I was ch had chills and it was in July, the latter part of July. Uh, uh, they took me to the hospital that the next day and they diagnosed me and said that I had a uh, virus, stomach virus. Mm -hmm. But I, I knew that it was something greater than that. And the Lord spoke to me that Saturday evening and said, when you get home Sunday morning, don't go home. Wow. Tell Elder Smith, assistant pastor, uh, to uh, take you straight to the hospital. Went straight to the hospital. They triaged me in seven, ten minutes. That's unheard. Of. Wow. <laughs> had me in a room in uh, less than twenty minutes. Mm. And uh, the nurse and the doctors were in my room in about twenty minutes after I got in the room, taking blood all kind of uh, uh, samples of this and that. And uh, they sent me for a scan because the doctor came back an hour later and said, what, well, I've seen the blood work, I don't like. I gotta send you for a scan. They took me to have a scan. By an hour later he came and said, I gotta do emergency surgery on you. You don't, you can't make a decision. You, you don't, don't tell us that you, can I think about it? Uh, he said, we gotta do this right now. Jesus. I had a perforated colon. And uh, I had uh, flew in. That was the miracle there with that perforated colon. 
they they just uh, uh, you know marvel over that thing. But anyway, they said uh, the doctor said I've got to call the surgeon to see if he's available. I said he's going to be available. Don't worry about that. He'll be available. And uh, he came back about uh, 45 minutes. He said, the surgeon said he's on his way. It was on Sunday morning. It was Sunday afternoon by then. It was on Sunday. And uh, that surgeon could have been on the beach with his family. He could have been anywhere, the yeah. surgeon that they wanted. And it brought tears to my eyes. And he showed up. And uh, late that late afternoon, they had me and explained to me what was going on, what they were going to have to do, and that I was going to end up with a colostomy. Uh, I was going to have a colostomy. That there's a possibility that we could reverse it, but you're going to have to wear. So the surgery was a smashing success. Thanks be unto God who got it the hands of the surgeon. And I wore that bag for eight months, and they were, I was blessed. They reversed it, and I am well of that deal. That was in 1819. I was stricken with the, with the malignancy, I call it. People call it cancer. Wow. But God does fit. Uh, he saw fit to uh, Jesus. completely a uh, prostate cancer. Uh, my last reading was 0 0.04. Jesus. 0 0.04, I believe that's what the doctor said. The doctor came in the room with all my records under his arm, and he stopped and he laughed and he pointed to God and then he pointed. He walked, he said, pointed up, and he pointed to me. He said, you're cured of this malignancy. Cancer. Jesus. 19. 20, I was stricken with the virus. Did not even know uh, what was going on. But God was in charge. Stricken with the virus. And uh, went to the hospital. And let me just say this. When I went to the doctor, I was scheduled to go to the doctor. Uh, on Wednesday morning, they called to tell me they canceled the appointment, but I didn't get the message. Mm. My daughter, she drove me there. She took me there, and uh, uh, they when I got there, they said, we tried to get in touch, but we canceled the appointment. The doctor's not going to be in the building today. Listen to me carefully. Wow. And I felt impressed in my spirit not to just leave the and go. Hmm. I stepped back and other people, you know, stepped in, et cetera. And they and I looked around, and, uh, you know, I'm saying, oh, man, my doctor. Well, I said, that when I headed to the door, who walks to the door but my doctor? Jesus. He said to me, how you doing, Bishop? I said, I'm doing great. He said, I want you to go right now to the west end of the hospital and have that virus, that COVID test. And tell them that I sent you to get it done. I said, yes, sir. I went there. Saturday morning, they called me say, and asked me, where are you? I said, I'm at home. Don't you move. We're sending an ambulance for you. Mm. And the rest is history. I was in the hospital 27 days. My Jesus. Jesus. He's the ventilator. Six days. And then Easter Sunday morning, my little niece in California told my family, I'm going to fast for uncle and I'm going on the fast. And I said that God said to me, he was going to raise him up Easter morning. Mm. Good God. I didn't know anything about it. And the Bishop Anthony W. Gilliard, yeah, one of the great young men of our church, like yourself, mm. right in North stars of our great future leaders of our church. Yes, you are. I said, God is going to use you, young man. He coordinated the jurisdiction and got the jurisdiction together, and they had prayer every evening, 6 p.m. Every evening at 6 p.m., people were on that line crying out and praying and asking God to raise me up. God raised me up Easter Sunday morning, and they took me out of the intensive care about... Uh, 24 hours later, they knew I was healed. Wow. Hey, Thank wow. you, Jesus. <laughs> Please excuse me when I think about my it. God. God. And I was in my right mind. I knew that I had been sick. And I said, I'm hungry. I can't eat. 
Can't have anything. Got to have a throat special to come and check you out first. He did the next day. But I knew that I was here. Thank you, Lord. And they put me in a regular room. And then a couple of days, about three or four days, they discharged me. When I discharged me, it was about 200 people lined up all the way outside, clapping and music blaring, hollering, God bless us. God bless them. And they took me out, took me to a rehab center. And the rehab center, Bishop, listen to this. When I got there, they were not too professional, not too kind. Mm -hmm. I told my son, you're going to have to come get me out of here. I don't know what you're going to do, but you got to get me out yeah. I'm waiting now because it was Friday. I have to wait Monday to see what they do with the call. But the enemy was trying to get me out of there because you know why? The person that got me up, I could not stand up. I could not walk. I was just like a little baby in the bed, but I was healed of the virus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In my right mind. My God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And had an appetite. God gave me back my appetite. Wow. He up. Yes, he did. And Bishop, I walked out of that rehab place. The person who was my occupational therapist. And she gave me, uh, see that, the, 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 the physical therapist. And occupational therapist, right? There's two different above the waist. I think is so uh, occupational, and below the waist is uh, 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 physical therapy. Okay. Anyway, she was a Church of God in Christ district missionary. Wow. Yes, sir. <laughs> district missionary Gazelle Davis. I call her name. Wow. Those who watch the, the woman of God worked with me, and when I in those twenty nine days I was there. Uh, they wheeled me in, but I walked out without a crutch, without a wheel, it being in a wheelchair, without a walker. I walked under the power of Almighty God who gave me the strength. And to God be the glory. Heal of the virus. Hallelujah. Back, hey, oh, hey, hey. back to work. Back to work. Preaching and teaching. Praying. Loving people. In spite of everything. Yes. God is with us, Bishop. He's with us. He's working miracles. I am a witness that God yet is in the healing business. So miracles, not a miracle. Miracles. Yeah. Yes. Has healed my body. Had these over the years. And thank you for listening and hearing me out to share this testimony as to what God has done. For me, where he has brought me from. Wow, this, this this is awesome. People are being blessed all around the world by this testimony that you're sharing, and I'm I'm impressed at the work of God in delivering you from the COVID nineteen. But I'm also impressed in the miracle of your persistence, because many people could have given up in 2016 when those trials started. Those are literally major life changing trials that God brought you through and yet you're still moving forward. Yes, and so Bishop, I want you to pray with us. There may be somebody tonight that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and savior. And um, of course we know that he is the ultimate miracle worker and there may be somebody discouraged. And so I want to um, give it into your hands to invite somebody to receive Christ as their uh, savior tonight. And then I want you to pray for us for this viewing audience. Uh, that God would touch us and give us that same mindset of persistence that you have. I thank God for the miracles, but again, thank God for the fact that you have stayed consistent. You started off hearing the voice of God when you moved to uh, the state of New Jersey, and even as a child there in Georgia, and you follow that same voice that God has given you up until this particular time, and he's blessing you right now. So offer Christ to someone and uh, say a word of prayer over our viewing audience. Bishop God, William Cahoon. God bless uh, you that in your homes, wherever you might be viewing this cast, this telecast, this live streaming. I want to say to you that uh, you will make the best decision in your life when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior. 
the scripture said, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? God wants to be on your side. And you know what? In Psalm 23 and 6, he wants to allow goodness and mercy to follow you all the days of your life. That's what's been happening to me and my family. Goodness and mercy is following me. The Bible teaches us that. That he allows goodness and mercy, his love and kindness to be with you. If you don't know the Lord, this is your privilege. This is your opportunity. This is your time. I exhort you. Young man, young lady. You might be away from home. You might have left home. But I'm encouraging you to receive the Lord Jesus Christ today, this evening. And watch God do and work miracles in your life. The enemy wants to hurt you and he wants to defeat you because he knows that God has a plan for your life. Who would have thought that when a little boy who finished high school left Georgia and would be a bishop and supervise 22, 23 churches today? Who would have thought it? But God knew it. He knew the thoughts that he had towards me. I want to extend to you an invitation to say yes to God. And I want you to bow your heads if you can. If you can't, just pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. And I'm asking you in the name of the Lord to forgive me of all of my sins and wash me, cleanse me, and receive me as a sinner. Come into my heart. I repent of my ways. And I invite you into my heart, into my life from this moment on. I receive you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Now, Lord, I pray. Hallelujah, Jesus. I, yo, oh, God. I pray for that young man, that young woman that accepted you as their Savior. And I entreat you on behalf of the ministry of Bishop Elijah Hankerson, the man of God, servant of the Lord. We're so godly proud of him, of his ministry, of his tenacity, of his perseverance. Won't let go, won't give up, won't turn it loose, not until something good happens in the lives of people, in his community, in the world in the state of Missouri, wherever he is seeking for souls. Bless him in his ministry. Bless his jurisdiction. Bless those that you have given him charge, that they will be obedient. They will work with him wholeheartedly. Bless his family and keep them from the hand of the enemy and protect them. For thou art able to do it. Look on his dear wife and take care of her. Oh God, we pray for healing and deliverance for people that are suffering. We speak healing and deliverance in your life. Be made whole. Be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for the victory, Lord, and thank you for your touch, and thank you for this platform. And thank you for this opportunity that you have granted to us on this evening to share your love with the people of the world. We thank you for the privilege and for the testimony of our personal, individual, corporate lives. Keep us, oh God, focused, disciplined, and intentional as we go forward in the power of the Holy Ghost. Bless us now in a very special way, we pray Bless our presiding bishop. Bless the church of God in Christ. Bless the body of Christ. Ministries everywhere who preach and call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Save in their churches, in their ministries. Look after them. Look on them. Take care of them. In the name in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. We receive it by faith. Thank God. Amen and amen. God. Glory to God. <laughs> Thank the Lord for such a powerful prayer from the man of God. Hallelujah. Let's just give God the praise right along with the bishop. Let's magnify the Lord. We praise God and thank God for the souls that have given their life to Jesus. 
We thank God for how we've been encouraged tonight and how we've been uplifted. And I encourage you to please let somebody else know about this powerful, powerful, powerful witness that has been given to us tonight from Bishop Cahoon. So please follow those instructions at the bottom of your screen and let somebody else know about what has transpired and what God has said. Please don't forget to support the ministry in giving. I won't say much else because Bishop Cahoon, I was taught that when the bishop is finished, and has said what he has to say, that's the end of it. And so I truly thank God for you and thank God for how you have blessed us on this evening. And we're just gonna go forth in the spirit of prayer and praise and faith that this man of God has given to us tonight. And so until next time, don't ever forget that every time we turn around, God is blessing.